Hey there. Okay, let's see. Uh, there have been a couple of updates in recent days. Um, we have added another release. Let's go to PD Howler. Uh, the latest one is version 2024. And uh, if you click here on news, it will take you to what's new, the captain's log, so to speak. And uh, in particular, just recently, we have build number 89. And uh, a day or two ago before that, we didn't release them. Uh, this one here, I'm actually going to put on the best3d.com and on the BMT Micro store. Um, so one of the things with this is that there is a there's a filter um, on the noise tool. Uh, that that one is pretty tall, has a, a pretty big interface. So for some users who have a low resolution or high DPI, they may not be able to see the bottom of it where the OK or the cancel buttons are. So we are adding a little X in the upper right corner, uh, which also is useful if you just want to reset the buttons, even if you have access to the bottom controls. The one in the upper right will always reset all the the default values. So that's useful um, and we'll take a look at that. And then also the other thing that's really nice is that the material names are now showing in the material editor when you go to the geometry render. So you have the ability to make it a different appearance, at least with some of the parameters, not everything. We cannot add additional parameters. Uh, maybe that's in the future. You know, it would be nice to have maybe a bump map added or a texture map when the original model is just plain polygons with no extra uh, bitmaps. So uh, that's something maybe for the future, but for now we can at least change the level of metallic appearance and so on. Let's take a look at that. So the first one is on that filter for the noise. Uh, it's actually not in the noise category, it's in the render. Uh, and it kind of is like a counterpart to the sky filter, I want to say. But the noise, noise tool here, you can see it's a pretty big, uh, pretty big window. And on my screen, it just fits nicely. But if this bottom part didn't show on your screen, uh, you now have this little X in the upper right corner to uh, close it. And that will also reset it. So if you have anything here, let's say you show it animated and you have a bunch of parameters changed and uh, you don't remember exactly how to get back to the defaults, uh, you, you should be able to get that done pretty quickly simply by closing this and go back to the filter, render, uh, noise tool, uh, and uh, you can check here with noise uh, show animated that will uh, now operate back with the default settings. All right, so that's one new feature. And hopefully, especially those with older laptops or desktops, uh, PCs with low resolution or uh, high DPI, uh, again, if you don't see the bottom here, this is going to be the light sa uh, lifesaver. Uh, you, can, uh, you can click out of it and you're back. All right. All right, and the other, uh, the other option, the other new feature or improved feature is in the render menu also, uh, down near the bottom, the render geometry. Uh, that's where you'll see, as before, you'll see uh, your 3D geometry. Uh, of course, it started long ago with the trees or the foliage, but uh, we have explored other ways to use it. And so now, if you look, for example, in the test category, I think that comes with the system. You have the dragon, for example. Um, and so when you load that, you'll see it, by the way, up here, if you ever noticed, at the top, it will show once it's actually loaded. Right. Sometimes it's a big model and it takes a while. And as long as you don't see the full path here, it's still loading. Um, and so now you see uh, it's got this uh, somewhat dark appearance. I don't have reflection maps or environment uh, selected yet. So I can do that. Let's say I want some outdoorsy, uh, maybe blue skies. There you go. And so you see that reflection there. But on top of that, I might want to give it more of a bluish tint, silver, not so much copper, or maybe gold and yellow. And so that's something you can do now here with the material properties. So it shows you some of the basic materials that are currently, and it shows you the name of the material. In this case, there's only one. But if you had multiple materials for different parts, it's good to know that they're not just called material one, material two, material three, etc., but they are actually showing the name that is used in your material file and referenced through the OBJ file. Uh, we cannot change those, save them. You can make changes and see them differently, but we're not saving them yet. 
Uh, maybe in the future we'll be able to use this also to really save the materials the way you want them. But at least you can go here, click the diffuse color, maybe give it a bit more of a golden appearance, let's say something like this. And so now you have a little bit more golden, maybe even more yellowish, reddish, something like that. Uh, okay, that. And then you can also change the roughness. So you have a perfect mirror or a very uh, dispersed uh, diffuse reflection. Uh, so you cannot very clearly see the, the image anymore, but you still get an idea of whether there is a little bit of metallic metalness here, the metallic appearance. And of course, my, one of my favorites is the pure mirror. The roughness at zero and metallic at 100% reflection. Um, that, that shows really nice. There's also a clear coat you can have if you reduce the gloss, you can see it better. Uh, and you might want to have it very low, but not at full intensity. So reduce the clear coat level. And so you just have a tiny little bit of that. And uh, there's also a bump, but that one only acts if you actually have a bump map on it. This model doesn't have a bump map. And again, that's where it might actually be interesting in the future, perhaps to add an additional material because there's many more properties. Let's take a look at all these properties, right? When you go back here and you see uh, the materials at the very top here, you see the shortcut to, uh, let me zoom out a little bit here, PBR. When you click on that, it shows you the many, many uh, parameters of the physics-based rendering. Uh, so this engine, um, has lots of parameters, and these are the ones that we are uh, implementing. Not all of them are there yet. Transparency we don't have yet. Uh, that would require ray tracing, but it's it's on the to-do list, and if we can get to it, we'll get to it. Uh, but there are certainly a number of parameters already supported and working, and of course, uh, this one here is interesting. That's where the bump comes in if we edit that in the materials. Uh, but you need to have a bump map also. So the, if you have a diffuse or if you have a bump map, uh, that, that one is the map actually, but if you have a bump amount, um, you, can, you, can include, you can modify that through the, the interface. Uh, and then of course, uh, there's quite a bit of sophistication here. And uh, some of these uh, do require extra images. Some of them are just single values. That's the one we're using here right now with the material editor. We have the metallic and the roughness and uh, and also the, the diffuse color. So those are the colors. Uh, there's an emissive color too. Uh, so there's, there's a number of parameters that you can edit that way. And uh, that's the one you see here, the roughness. And so if you, if you give it some roughness, uh, it will disperse the reflection but also some of the lighting will appear a little bit differently. So here it is, uh, a different appearance for that uh, dragon that initially looked very uh, rusty or, or copper reddish in appearance, and now you have a very different appearance. Hopefully that will allow you to use your 3D models in many other ways. And uh, let us know what else we need, uh, what else you need to, to add to this. Um, you know, I, I personally think it would be really great if we could actually save the settings that we have here and later go back to them. <clears throat> but, um, you know, basically switch between the original material file and a modified or something like that. I don't know exactly how we would implement that. But there's a lot of value in being able to give it a different appearance. You know, it's one thing to have the geometry, but then all the lighting and the colors and, and the environment reflection and, you know, where the light shines on it. All of that gives it so much a different drama. So uh, let's uh, let's hear from you and let's see what's, uh, what else we can do with that. Thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next time.